بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد the author he mentioned رحمه الله تعالى باب ذكر مودة أعداء الله the chapter with regards to the mention of loving loving the enemies of Allah loving the enemies of Allah no doubt this is from a disease from a disease in the heart that the heart will be overcome with this affair with the preference of the dunya and uh, with the love of this life until the extent that one he will he will love the enemies of Allah and he will love their way and he'll become amazed with them and he will like them and what they're upon and he will act like them and follow them and imitate them and this is the outcome from having love for them because uh, the affair begins in the heart and when somebody loves something he will seek after that whenever somebody loves something he will seek after that and the people of knowledge they mentioned that the heart it is the it is the king the heart it is the king that al-qalb maliku al-a'da is the king and the body parts junuduhu the body parts are his forces and whatever the king lusts for loves and desires then the forces they will go get that for him and they will obtain that for him so this is the case whenever a person he will have love for the enemies of Allah love for the enemies of Allah وَلِيَذُ billah. contrary to that a true believer one who has been given success and who was aided by Allah Azza wa Jal and he has fulfilled the rights of faith and Iman and he has made his love entirely for Allah and therefore he loves what Allah loves and he loves whom Allah loves and he loves for the sake of Allah and uh, likewise he also hates and dislikes what Allah hates and dislikes and those whom Allah hates and dislikes and he will also hate for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal then he will never have love in his heart he will never have love in his heart for the enemies for the for the enemies of Allah and the enemies of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and this is the strongest bond of faith and it has been uh, narrated on the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and that he said أَوْثَقُ أُرَى الْإِيمَانِ الْحُبُّ فِي اللَّهِ وَالْبُغْضُ فِي اللَّهِ that the strongest bond of faith the strongest bond of faith is to love for the sake of Allah and to hate for the sake of Allah and it's been narrated likewise from the hadith of Abu Umamata radiallahu anhu collected by Abu Dawood and other than him rahimahullah that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said مَنْ أَحَبَّ لِلَّهِ وَأَبْغَضِ لِلَّهِ وَأَعْطَى لِلَّهِ وَمَنَعَ لِلَّهِ فَقَدْ إِسْتَكْمَلَ الْإِيمَانِ That whoever loves for the sake of Allah and he hates for the sake of Allah and he gives for the sake of Allah and he prohibits for the sake of Allah then, there, then verily he has completed his faith. فَقَدْ إِسْتَكْمَلَ الْإِيمَانِ Then verily he has completed the faith. So this is from the perfection of the deen and the perfection of, of the faith to, to love Allah and to love what he loves and whom he loves and to love for his sake and to have an allegiance for the sake of Allah and to have an allegiance for the sake of Allah and uh, with the believers and uh, to have enmity likewise for the sake of Allah and all of this is <coughs> governed and regulated according to the legislation and is kept in check by the reins of the Sharia and the deen of Allah Azza wa Jal so there are limits with regards to this but that is the case inside of the heart there's no love for the enemies of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then the dealings they will be they will be accordingly according to that which is allowed and according to that which is permissible so this is the affair the author is clarifying from the major sins from the major sins and diseases of the heart is to love the enemies of Allah and the statement of Allah the most high يُوَادُّونَ مَنْ حَادَ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ وَلَوْ كَانُوا آبَاءَهُمْ أَوْ أَبْنَاءَهُمْ أَوْ إِخْوَانَهُمْ أَوْ أَشِيرَتَهُمْ That you will not find the people who believe in Allah in the last day. And here we have again the couple uh, coupled together, belief in Allah in the last day. Those who truly believe in Allah and His Lordship 
and his beautiful names and attributes and his legislation subhanahu wa ta'ala and the right to be worshipped alone and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he has the most beautiful names and attributes of perfection deserving to be worshipped alone subhanahu wa ta'ala and that he has commandments and prohibitions and that this life is a test and one will meet Allah azza wa jalla and he will be held accountable and he will be held accountable you will not find the people who truly believe in Allah in the last day the last day is the meeting with Allah and the recompense for the application of the deen of Allah and the recompense for the application of the legislation of Allah. Those who truly believe in Allah and the meaning of Allah Azza wa Jalla, you will not find them. You will not find them having a love, having love and close friendship and ties with those who have opposed entirety Allah and His Messenger. For the, with, with those who have opposed entirety Allah and His Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, even if it was from His Father. وَلَوْ كَانُوا أَبَاءَهُمْ أَوْ أَبْنَاءَهُمْ أَوْ إِخْوَانَهُمْ Even if it was from his father or his, his sons, and his children or his brothers, or from his brethren, his, kin, his kinsmen and his tribesmen, his relatives, أَوْ عَشِيرَاتَهُمْ أُولَئِكَ كَتَبَ فِي كُلُوبِهِمُ الْإِيمَانَ وَأَيَّدُهُمْ بِرُوحٍ مِنْ These are the ones that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written in their hearts and decreed that they will have sincere faith. And they are the ones who are aided they are aided with light and knowledge and they are aided with tawfiq and success from Allah Azza wa Jal to be upright. And they are the ones whom Allah has decorated their hearts with iman and sincere faith and caused the faith to be beloved to them. And they love it and they love it and it's beautified in their hearts. And also these are the ones whom Allah has caused, whom Allah has caused, uh, has caused disbelief and disobedience and transgression and sin to be to be to be detestful to them as Allah he mentioned in Surah Al-Hujurat similar to this verse here وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ حَبَّبَ إِلَيْكُمُ الْإِيمَانَ وَزَيَّنَهُ فِي قُلُوبِكُمْ وَكَرَّهَ إِلَيْكُمُ الْكُفْرَ وَالْفُسُوقَ وَالْإِسْيَانَ أُولَئِكَ هُمْ الرَّاشِدُونَ These are the people who are upright and rightly guided these are those who are upright and, and rightly guided and these are the ones whom uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has aided them and supported them in this life and hereafter. And Allah will admit them into gardens of paradise with, uh, with rivers flowing beneath mansions and they will abide there and forever. It is these people that will be admitted. Those who have a love for Allah and allegiance for Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ulaika Hizbullah. These are the ones who are truly the party of Allah and truly the, the sincere believers in Allah that they have made their love sincerely for Allah and their allegiance sincerely for Allah and likewise their hatred as well. Therefore their life and their death is for Allah and that which they are upon, they are upon that for the sake of Allah and that which they believe is they believe in Allah for the sake of Allah and that which Allah commanded them to believe and that which they do, they do it based upon that belief whenever they come and whenever they go and the relationships that they have and the dealings that they do and the manner that they move it's all for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal and based upon faith These are the ones that Allah has written in their hearts faith and He has decorated the faith in their hearts and made it beautiful to them and they love that and they're aided by Allah Azza wa Jal in this manner and they have completed their faith and this requires likewise that the disbelief in all avenues of that and likewise disobedience in all avenues of corruption and innovation and misguidance is also detestful to them. These are the successful and these are the rightly guided. So this is what the author he's referring to here. So those people who take them uh, uh, the enemies of Allah uh, uh, as allies and uh, close companions and friends and they love them in their way, this is contrary to faith. This is contrary to faith and this is opposite uh, of what is required. This is opposite of what is required. He said, وَقَوْلِهِ in the statement of Allah, قُلْ إِنْ كَانَ آبَاؤُكُمْ وَأَبَنَاؤُكُمْ وَإِخْوَانُكُمْ وَأَزْوَاجُكُمْ وَعَشِيرَتُكُمْ وَأَمْوَالٌ اِكْتَرَفْتُمُوهَا وَتِجَارَةٌ تَخْشَوْنَ كَسَادَهَا وَمَا سَاكِينُ تَرْضَوْنَهَا أَحَبَّ إِلَيْكُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ وَجِهَادٍ فِي سَبِيلِهِ فَتَرَبَّسُوا فَتَرَبَّسُوا حَتَّى يَأْتِيَ اللَّهُ بِأَمْرِهِ حَتَّى يَأْتِيَ اللَّهُ بِأَمْرِهِ He said, say, 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this verse he says say qul yani ya Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam if your fathers and your sons and if your fathers and your children and your brothers and your wives and your tribesmen or your relatives and the wealth that you have gained and your commerce that you fear that will be neglected or that, that you fear you fear that it would fall or that it would not prosper and likewise your dwellings and your homes that you live in and that you're pleased with if these things are more beloved to you ahabba ilaykum more beloved to you then uh, then allah and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and striving in his path fatarabbasu and even just wait and you meaning this is a threat then wait for the punishment fatarabbasu hatta yati allahu bi amri then wait and it's a threat wait for the command of allah to come meaning the punishment of allah to come for those who have shown preference to these affairs here over over the love of allah and over the love of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and striving in the path of allah wallahu la yahdi al qawm al fasiqeen allah he does not guide the disobedient and evil people of corruption who have left off obedience who have left off obedience so the people of not as they mentioned about this verse they they mentioned that in this verse there are the uh, al mahab al thamaniya the uh, the eight affairs the uh, the eight affairs that is ingrained in the soul of every human being that he loves these affairs there are eight of them and he, and and every soul he loves these affairs yani this is how the human being is the people of not as they say jubilat al nufus ala mahabbatiha jubilat al nufus ala mahabbatiha that the souls they're created and it's ingrained in them the love the love for their fathers and and the love of their children and the love of their brothers and their wives these are things that is in the heart of every human being he loves his father and his forefathers and he loves his uh, children and he loves his wife and likewise he loves his uh, relatives and also his wealth he loves his wealth as, as well the human being he loves wealth hubban jamma a great a great love a great love and he likewise loves his commerce and his trade and his business and he loves his dwellings to have nice home and to have nice property and the likes like this these are things that are beloved to the human being and to love them this natural love that is created and ingrained in the soul is not blameworthy in itself and a person is not held accountable for that even if he had a father who was a disbeliever or or from his family that were disbelievers and he had the love the love of a father or the love of the son for his father or if there was a son that was a disbeliever and he had the love of the father for his son and the lights like this or if he had a wife it's allowed to have a wife for example she's a christian or, or a jew from the people of the book and he had love in his heart for his wife this is allowed and he has a natural love this is a normal love a person he loves wealth he loves to have good property and he loves to be uh, to, to be prosperous and to have good all of this is is allowed and a person he's not held accountable for this affair until these issues become more beloved to him ahabba ilaykum min allahi wa rasulihi wa jihad fi sabilihi until they, if these things are more beloved to you than uh, allah and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and striving in in uh, the cause of allah then now you wait so therefore it's allowed to love these things the natural love and, and the likes but if that love takes precedence over the love of, of allah or the love of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at this time this is whenever it becomes it becomes blameworthy it becomes blameworthy to show precedence to the love of these affairs and to the love of one's own souls and one's lust and desires likewise is included here yani from these affairs that are beloved likewise a person he has love for himself and that's why it has come in the hadith of umar radiallahu anhu that the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said that not until you, not until i'm more beloved to you than than even your own soul than even your own soul so this is the case here and to have this love is allowed and it's not blameworthy but if that love is shown preferred shown preference and give precedence over the love of allah meaning in obedience if a person he's tried uh with one of these affairs and it's in a it's contrary or in opposition or it's in contradiction to the command of allah or to the command of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at this time he must show preference to the command of allah and show preference to the order of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam even if these other things that he loves call him to contrary to that and this is the test and this is the test and the details of these affairs alhamdulillah have come 
and uh, Kitab uh, At-Tawheed for those who want to refer back to that, to the details of the different types of love and the examples of each one and uh, the rulings of those affairs. But here it's clear that uh, one will not love anyone more than he loves Allah. And likewise, he will not love the, anyone uh, from the people more than he loves the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his love for the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is for the sake of Allah. So even then, the love of the Messenger is not equal with the love of Allah. The foundation is the love of Allah. And everything after that is loved for the sake of Allah. And at the head of that is the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he is loved yani from mankind more than one loves his family and more than one loves all of mankind and his wealth and even more than he loves his soul. And this has been narrated as has proceeded from the Hadith of Umar and likewise from the Hadith of Anas and other than that, yani from this affair. So the author, he says, And again, this is another threat. So do not, uh, Do not incline. Do not incline to the oppressors or else the fire will touch you. Do not incline to the oppressors. Yani al-rukun is al-mahabbatu wal-maylu bil-qalb. Al-rukun here what is intended, wala tarkanu, wala tarkanu ila al-ladhina zalamu. Wa yani la tamiru ilayhim bil-mahabba wal-mawadda. Do not yani incline to them with love, uh, with love and honor. And to those who are oppressors, or else the fire will touch you. Or else the fire will touch you. This is a threat. Yani for those who love uh, the, the wicked and the evil and the disobedient and the oppressors, those who have uh, transgressed the limits and disbelieved in Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam do not, do not incline towards them with love and honor and reverence or else the fire will touch you or else the fire will touch you and this is a, a, a clear threat this is a clear threat and likewise when he, from the benefits of this narration is just being in their company just being in their company, that uh, if one is with them, whenever the punishment befalls them, he's threatened likewise to be touched with the punishment that will befall them, and he will be held accountable and for that. So if he's in their company, and he's with them, and he's uh, around them, then he has exposed himself to the threat of Allah Azza wa Jalla and the punishment. And likewise, whenever these people are engaged in their evil, if the punishment befalls, it will touch those along with them. It will touch those uh, along with them. So this is a threat and to stay away from uh, from them and to not take them as allies and companions and friends and to be in their company and and, and the likes. The author, he says, وَقَالَ أَبُوا الْعَارِيَةِ أَبُوا الْعَارِيَةِ is from the Tabi'een, رَحِيمَهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالِيَ He says, لَا تَرَضُوا بِأَعْمَالِهِمْ And the meaning, وَلَا تَرَكَنُوا And لَا تَرَضُوا بِأَعْمَالِهِمْ Do not be pleased. Do not be pleased with their actions. Do not be pleased with their actions. Even if a person, he has to deal with them, and he has to do business with them, and he has to communicate with them, and the likes like this, uh, at least in his heart, he's not pleased with their actions. and He's not pleased with their deeds. and He's not uh, happy with what they're upon. And even if he gives them their rights, the rights of the neighbor, for example, or the rights of the co-worker, or the colleague, or the, or, or the, the classmate, and the likes like this. We have contract with these people, and we have uh, been ordered to be kind to them. And, he, and to have ihsan with them, especially those who do good to us. And we're not prohibited from being just with them and, and being good to them. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He did not prohibit the believers from being kind and nice and uh, being just to those who did not kick you out of your home for your religion and did not fight you for your, for, for, for your deen. And need to be just to them. Rather, Allah, He loves those who are just. So those people we have contracts with and those people who we live, for example, in this society, they, they, they have rights from us and that we will not harm them and we will not shed their blood and we will not deceive them and trick them or take their wealth. But, that, but likewise, uh, with regards to the rights of Allah, Azza wa Jal, we will not love them. We will not be pleased with what they are upon from, from, the, from their foul creed and from their foul belief, especially those who claim that Allah, He has a son. Especially from those who claim that this is the, this is the foul creed and nafal belief and then the actions that proceed from that like Christmas trees and wreaths on the door and lights and jingle bells and the likes like this this is all falsehood and evil and a believer he'll never be pleased with that he'll never be happy with that and it's amazing affair today that we will see that some of the some of some of the Muslims they'll have Christmas trees in their homes or or in their jobs 
uh, or, or, or any in their businesses and the lights like that and they put that there with their own with their own choice where they will have they'll have Thanksgiving dinners and they'll have Christmas dinners and they have turkey and mashed potatoes and and and, and uh, these specific foods that are halal yeah. turkey is halal but on, on on Thanksgiving on Thanksgiving and on Christmas a turkey on that day is nothing but a, a Thanksgiving dinner Turkey and, and, and uh, casserole and the likes on, on, on Christmas Day, on, on, on December 25th, there's nothing except for Christmas dinner for these people. Take it from somebody who knows. Yani, we lived in this manner the majority of our lives, so there's never a Christmas, there's never a, a chicken, a turkey, and the likes and gravy on, the, on that day except it's Christmas dinner, except it's Thanksgiving dinner, except for it's, a, it's a Easter gathering and he, on those days that's what they do and those meals are specific for that so we will never imitate them in that we'll never imitate them in that and follow them in that and then to have a christmas tree so much evil is behind that how could a believer ever be pleased with that and do not incline to those oppressors and this is the worst of oppression to give the right of allah to 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 uh to the creation and, and to associate partners with Allah. The heavens are about to split asunder and the earth is about to split in parts and, and the mountains are about to fall from their places and in that they claim that the Ar Rahman he has a son. So this is a foul way and an evil way and a believer will never be pleased with that. He will never be happy with that. And as has proceeded, this is governed by the legislation, and this does not require or necessitate for him to uh, <coughs> violate their rights or, or to oppress them and the likes like this, but this is an affair of the heart. He will never participate with them in that, and he will never share in that whatsoever. And he will be far from that uh, at that time specifically, at all times, but at that time and on those days and at those moments ex specifically, he will never give up anything from his religion for these affairs. And if this is the case, but those who have a weak heart and their faith has become weak, then they will lean and they will incline to them and they'll sacrifice their religion for the pleasure of the, of the enemies of Allah because they have love in their heart for them and they want to be accepted by them. So this is yani, a major sin. This is a major sin. So Abu Ariya, Rahimahullah uh, Ta'ala, if I remember correctly, I think he died in the year 94. And he's from the Tabi'in, and he, he died before or in the early 100s. Rahimahullah Ta'ala. La taradaw bi amalihim. Do not be pleased uh, with their actions. As Suddi, he mentioned also as Suddi and Abu Ariya, they're from those who are well known with the tafsir uh, of the Quran. As Suddi, he died in the year 127. He said, La tudahinu al dhalama. And you do not uh, compromise with them. Do not compromise the religion with them. And to, be, to, to make mudahana is to back up and to give a portion of the deen to please the people, to have a portion of the dunya. So this is what it means. And do not incline with love and honor and respect to those who are oppressors. I need the disbelievers or else the fire will touch you. Or else the fire will touch you. The author, he says, وَرُوِيَا عَنْ إِبْنَ عَبَاسٍ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُمَا أَنُّهُمْ قَالَ لَا تَمِيلُوا إِلَيْهِمْ كُلَّ الْمَيْلِ فِي الْمَحَبَّةِ وَلِينَ الْكَلَامِ وَالْمَوَدَّةِ And he do not incline to them all the way. Do not incline to them all the way with love and with, uh, with the nice and kind speech يعني, and respect and honor. يعني, meaning that if a person, he were to deal with them and he would have ihsan with them and he would deal with them respectfully but not all the way. Not until they become his close partner. Not until they become his friend that he relies upon. Or the, 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 the hatred in the heart is still there, even if his dealings are good. Even, even if his dealings are good. And he, he's honest with them. And this will be for the sake of Allah. And his uh, dealings with them will be for the sake of Allah again. And uh, his heart will have hatred for them and what they're upon. But at the same time, he will give them their rights. At the same time, he will give them their rights. وَلَا تَمِيلُوا إِلَيْهِمْ كُلَّ الْمَيْلِ فِي الْمَحَبَّةِ وَلِينَ الْكَلَامِ وَالْمَوَدَّةِ after this, the author, he mentioned uh, another narration. He says, وَعَنِ بِنِ مَسْعُودٍ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ أَنَّ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ قَالَ الْمَرْءُ مَعَ مَنْ أَحَبَّ الْمَرْءُ مَعَ مَنْ أَحَبَّ And this is from uh, a beautiful understanding uh, of the author 
Rahimahullah Ta'ala. And this narration here, from one aspect, is a great glad tidings. And from another aspect, as we see here, it's a threat. It's a threat. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said that a man, a man, a person, he is with the one he loves. He'll be with the one he loves, meaning in the hereafter. Meaning in the hereafter. He'll be with the one he loves. And so here we have the chapter. What is the chapter? The chapter of loving the enemies of Allah. So and he, if, from this aspect, in closing the chapter in this manner, be careful. And he, because loving them, if a person he died upon that, he'll be resurrected with them. Amaru ma'amana heb. And if, if a person he loved the, the disbelievers, what he ever be like, he'll be resurrected with the one he loves. He'll be resurrected with the one he loves. So it's a threat. But uh, this narration likewise has been uh, narrated by Anas. Uh, عنه, and he mentioned that for them, for them because they love Allah and His Messenger. Yani the companions, they love Allah and His Messenger. Uh, it, was a, it was a great uh, glad tidings. And they, and they rejoiced whenever they heard this narration, a great rejoicing. And they were pleased and very happy. And it's been collected by Bukhari and Muslim that Anas he says, uh, عنه, that a man, he came and he asked the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam about the hour. So he said, and he, when is the hour? And he, when is the day of judgment going to be established? When is the day of judgment going to be established? So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, What did you prepare for it? What did you prepare for it? And this is and he, from the beautiful teaching of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi because this is a, a question that uh, only Allah knows. And in the, uh, from the Mafatih al Ghaib and the keys of the unseen that no one knows except for Allah Azza wa Jal is the Ilm uh, Sa'a, whenever the, the hour will be. And whenever Jibril he came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and asked him about that, he said, anha bi min sail. The one who is being asked about it does not have more knowledge than one who is asking. And he, I don't know any more than you. I don't know any more than you. So this is something only Allah knows. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So to ask about this question here and to ask about this affair here is not beneficial. It's not beneficial. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he, re he redirected him in a beautiful manner. He redirected him into, 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 uh, to a in a beautiful manner to that which is most important. It's not important when it is, but what did you prepare for it? What did you prepare for it? So this is the question. Yani for every individual that he should ask himself, not when is the day of judgment, yani, ma, ma, mata al when is the resurrection? And uh, it's clear likewise the people of knowledge have mentioned that uh, uh, al -qiyama, al that the qiyama, the resurrection is two, al qiyama al sughra wal qiyama al kubra, al qiyama al sughra the small, the smaller resurrection, the smaller resurrection, and yani the hour. And in this manner, the smaller resurrection and the major resur resurrection. The major resurrection is the day whenever Allah, He resurrects all of mankind. And He, and he brings them back to life, all on one plane, to be questioned and held accountable. To be questioned and held accountable for their actions. All of mankind, all of them, from the beginning of them to the end of them. This is the major resurrection. But before that, there's a minor resurrection that for, for every person. The hour will come to Him whenever He will leave this life. When he will leave this life. So likewise, we don't know when that will be. Not one of us knows. This is from the knowledge of the unseen. And only Allah, he knows. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. But that's not important when that will come. Whether it's today or tomorrow or the next day. We ask Allah and we hope from his mercy to give us a long life upon his obedience. And to give us a good ending. But, it does, but no one knows when that will be. But what's important? Mada? A'dataleha. What did you prepare for it? What did you prepare for that day? So a successful believer, he's preparing for that day, the day that his soul will leave his body. He's preparing for that day. He's not heedless of that day. He's not negligent of that day. He's not forgetful of that day. He thinks of that day often and how it, when, when it will come, he does not know. But how will it come? This is what concerns a believer. How will it come? This is what concerns a believer. That, 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 that a believer, he hopes that it will come in a good way. So therefore, this remembrance here will wake his heart up will wake his heart up and it will wake his soul up and it will be a means for him to rectify himself and to purify his intention and to check his soul and to take himself to account and to work hard for that which remains and to work hard for that which remains so that whenever the death comes it comes in a good manner bi-idhnillahi ta'ala bi-idhnillahi ta'ala so the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said ma da'a'da'a'ta laha 
What did you prepare? What did you prepare for it? And so this is an amazing question. But this noble companion, radiallahu anhu, wallahi, he came with an amazing answer. He came with an amazing answer. He said, uh, radiallahu anhu, la shay'a illa anni uhibbullaha wa rasulahu. And in this narration, he said, I didn't prepare anything. And here, la shay'a, I didn't prepare anything except for the fact that I love Allah and His Messenger. And some of the words, and some of the wordings, he said, Ma'indi kathir as-salati wa kathir as He said, I don't have a lot of non-obligatory prayer. I don't have a, a lot of non-obligatory fasting and charity. And I don't have a lot of these, these, these deeds. So we should have misunderstanding. La shay. And this person, he is humble. And he, what did you prepare for? And he's looking at himself like he, he hasn't really prepared much. But he, he, he's a companion. He's praying and alongside the Messenger. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he's learning along with him. So he has deeds. He has deeds, but he said, I don't have a lot of, I don't have a lot of prayer. I don't have a lot of charity. I don't have a lot of fasting. Walakinni uhibbu Allah wa rasulahu. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, but, but I love Allah. But I love Allah and his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this is the narration now. The Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he told him, Anta ma'a man ahbabt. You, are, uh, you, you will be with the one that you love. You will be with the one that you love. So this is the case. A believer, his heart is for Allah. The heart is created by Allah. Who created the heart? Who shaped and formed the heart? Who gives life to the heart? It is Allah Azza wa Jalla. So therefore, everything that the heart experiences from pleasure and from pain and hardship and difficulty is all from Allah. And Allah, He's the most wise and most powerful and strong. And He's the most kind and He's most merciful. Likewise, He's severe in punishment. So therefore, the heart is dedicated to Allah and attached to Allah. And this requires for Him to love who Allah loves. To love who Allah loves and to hate who Allah hates and dislikes. And in this manner, He can be with uh, the one He loves. He can be with the one He loves. And, he, and, and this is the case. And in the hereafter, أَنْتَ مَعَ مَنْ أَحْبَبْتِ And this is an amazing narration. And this gives a great, great hope into the heart. A great hope into the heart. Because and he, if that's the case of this companion, radiallahu anhu, and he, even if he's Arabi from the desert, and he, he's a companion. He's a companion. He said, la shay. I, I don't have, what did you prepare for? I don't have, I don't have much. I don't have much from the deeds. And he, I don't have much from the deeds, but I love. But my heart loves Allah. My heart loves the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he said, the Prophet, he said, anta ma'a man ahbibt. At this time, Anas, radiallahu anhu, he says, فَمَا فَرِحْنَا بِشَيْءٍ فَرَحَنَا بِقَوْلِ النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمْ أَنْتَ مَعْ مَنْ أَحْبَبْتِ Anas, radiallahu anhu, he says, so whenever we heard this narration, we had never rejoiced any, in any manner. The way that we, we rejoiced over the statement of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, that you will be with the, with the one that you love. That you will be with the one that you love. At this time, Anas, he, he, he said, uh, رضي الله عنه, فأنا أحب النبي. He said, that we, never, we were never happy the way that we were happy. We never rejoiced the way that we rejoiced whenever we heard this narration. He said, so me, I love the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم وأبا بكر وعمر. فأنا, فأنا أحب النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وأبا بكر وعمر وأرجو أن أكون معهم he said that verily I love the Prophet وسلم, and Abu Bakr and Umar. And I hope that I will be along with them because of my love for them. Even if my actions are not like their actions and deeds. And even if my actions are not to the, to the rank of their actions and to their deeds. And there are a number of amazing benefits here. And this is the case first and foremost of Anas radiallahu anhu. That he didn't suffice only. <laughs> I verily I love the Prophet. But he mentioned likewise the ones who the Prophet loves the most. Uh, from the men. He said, I verily I love the Prophet. So not only does he want to be with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But he wants to be with those he knows are with the Prophet. I love the Prophet and I love Abu Bakr and I love Umar. And I hope that I will be with them, even if my deeds are not like their deeds. There's a benefit here. Even, even if my deeds are not like their deeds. The fact that Anas, he coupled the actions of Abu Bakr and Umar with the actions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They're definitely not equal. But, but, but uh, next in line. Next in line from the best, from the best uh, of the people after the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from this Ummah is Abu Bakr. 
and then Umar and then Uthman radiyallahu anhum jami'an so they, they're the best any meaning in their deen and their faith and their iman and their creed and their obedience and their actions and their deeds and their speech and their statements <laughs> and their Islam they're the best and, he, and, and their actions are great and he knows that and he confesses that and he wants to be along with them even if his deeds do not reach the deeds of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Abu Bakr and Umar and Abu Bakr and Umar and we see that you know, this is an indication likewise that uh, loving the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as well means to love those whom he loves and, and Allah azza wa jal he selected the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he chose him and he chose his time and he chose the people that, that he chose to be his companions and he chose from them Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu to be his closest companion and to be his closest friend in all of his affairs, the first man to believe in him. The first man to believe in him. Abu Bakr, he gave his wealth for him. And, and he went through much hardship and difficult for him. And uh, for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was by his side in his hijrah, all the way until the end of his life. They, he, he's with him and by his side and aiding him. And whenever the people belied him, he believed in him. And whenever the people denied him, he gave him his wealth. Uh, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this is the case of Abu Bakr. Until uh, we know the hadith of, uh, of uh, of Amr ibn al-As radiyallahu anhu that he said Sa'altu al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam man ahabu nasi ilayka and who is the most beloved of the people to you the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said Aisha radiyallahu anha Aisha the most beloved of mankind to me Aisha the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said and then he said min al-rijal from the men from the men what did he say Abuha sallallahu alayhi wa sallam her father her father and he, وبعد ذلك, after that he said Umar ibn al-Khattab radiyallahu uh, anhu this is the case and it's been also authenticated from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallama that he said uh, Abu Bakr and Umar sayyidaku huri ahl jannah ada al-nabiyyina wal musalin that uh, Abu Bakr and Umar they're the masters they're the best they're the leaders of the, of the adults of paradise except for the prophets and messengers and he, so that means that all, out of all of the the companions of all of the prophets, and all of the, the, the companions and followers of Musa, السلام, and he had a great following, and he had a great following, and the followers of Isa, and, the, and the, followers, the followers of all of the prophets, better than all of their followers is Abu Bakr, first and foremost, and Omar, the best of mankind after the prophets and messengers, after the prophets and messengers. So therefore, I need to love them, it is from the deen. And this is also very suitable to mention in this chapter here, and in the chapter of uh, knowing that it's a major sin to love the enemies, to love the enemies of Allah, to love the enemies of Allah, and likewise the enemies of the Messenger, and the enemies of those who are enemies to those who the Messenger loves, and those whom uh, the Messenger loves, Allah, He loves them. Allah, He loves Abu Bakr. The, he, he chose Abu Bakr. Allah created Abu Bakr to be the, the companion of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah, He created Umar. And he created Aisha and he selected them and chose them to be his companions and from his family and from his, uh, from his followers and the likes like this. This is all from the decree of Allah and from the wisdom of Allah. Uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So therefore those who detest them and hate them and dislike them, even if they claim and they claim and they claim, they're liars. They're liars and the Muslims should never be deceived. And the Muslims should never be deceived and never take them as friends or allies or companions first and foremost, the Rafiullah and those who curse Abu Bakr and Umar and those who curse Uthman uh, anhum, and those who curse other than them, Muawiyah radiallahu anhu likewise and find fault with them and speak ill of them and those who curse uh, Aisha and in their societies, those, and he, those who follow that way, the way of a rafd. They, they, they will write the names of Umar and Abu Bakr on the bottom of the shoes of their children and tell them to walk on their names. And they will, they will, they have, they, at times they will curse their names. And they will chant together and they will say, Aisha fin nar. They will say that. What do you have to be allowed to to say that? But I'm informing you. They say, they, they say Aisha is in the fire. Aisha is in, and they will chant that and say it out loud. And they will teach their children like this. Abu Bakr fin nar. That's what they say. And that's what they teach their children. And this is what they claim. What do you have to be allowed? We never, ever have love for them. Nothing but hatred. Wallahi, nothing but hatred. Even then it's still governed, likewise, by the legislation and the person. He will not violate the rights if they have rights and the likes like this. And he is still governed in, the, in this manner and a person he has wisdom. But in his heart, there's nothing but hatred for them. There's nothing but hatred for them. And there'll never be love for the likes of this. And, and this is the case. And, he, and, and likewise, from, from, from the rest of the, of the kafara and the disbelievers, a believer in his heart, he will, not have, he will not have love for them. He will not have love for them. He will not have love for them. 
and, and this is very, very important. Ibn Qayyim, he mentioned, Rahimahullah, Tadda'i hubb al-habibi, Tuhib al-habibi, wa tadda'i, Allahu al-mustan, say by the bell. <laughs> What's the lines of poetry? Uh, Inshallah, we remember after the Adhan. <laughs> no, it's from the Nuniya. Inshallah, I'm going to remember. Tuhibu Ada al Habibi wa Tadda, you bend of Nam. Allah is the man. Ibn Qayyim Rahimahullah Ta'ala, he mentioned to Hibu Ada al Habibi wa Tadda, you bend of Nam. Madaka fi amkani. Madaka fi amkani. To, and he, that, that you love the enemies of the beloved and you claim that you love him, he said, that's not even possible. That's not even possible. To hibbu a'ada'a al-habibi wa tadda'i hubban lahu. Madaka fi amkani. You love the enemies of the beloved and you claim that you love him. He said, it's not even possible. It's not even possible. Even, even a young child, he will know that. He will know that. If there is somebody in the neighborhood who, who is a bully, for example, and he's mean to the people, and he's mean to and he's mean to that child, and he's rude to that child and harsh to that child, and 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 there's enmity between the, the, these two children, and then another child comes and he claims that he's his friend, but he runs down there and plays plays with him after asr, <laughs> and then he comes back. Where were you at? I was playing with. Him. I, I, I thought you were my friend, and how are you gonna go play with that guy who picks on me and he beats me and he cheats me and he's harsh to me? Even the kids they know this. The kids that know this, that if that, that, that's not true love. If you love somebody, then you, you don't take their enemies as allies and friends. You don't take their enemies as allies and friends. What do you have to To have uh, the 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 and uh, likewise, for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal, SubhanAllah, somebody will say that they love Allah, and then they'll take riba. Then they'll take riba. They say they love the Messenger of Allah, and then they'll take riba. And this is a great deficiency, because Allah, He said about Him and His Messenger that there's a war for the one who takes riba. فَأَذَنُوا بِحَرْبٍ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ فَأَذَنُوا بِحَرْبٍ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ so, so if somebody claimed that, but then he does that, and he knows that, then he's taking a clear step of going to war with Allah and His, mess and his Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and so the claims are not sufficient the claims are not sufficient a believer he has to be sincere in his faith and his love for Allah Azza wa Jal and His Messenger and His Messenger yani to hibbu a'da al-habibi wa tadda'i hubban lahu ma dhakir fi amkani wa kada tu'adi jahidan ahbabahu ayna al-mahabbatu ya akha shaytani he said and likewise you strive against uh, the, and you strive having enmity for the beloved, for his friends, and for his beloved, where's the love at? Where's the love at, O oh, brother of shaitan? And he, he, somebody, he, he, ha, he has friendship and love for the enemies of the one he claims he loves. And then those whom the one he claims he loves, the, those whom he loves, he himself had enmity towards them. And he, where's the love at? Where's the love at? If, 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 if he claims he loves Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then how can he take the, the enemies of Allah and His Messenger as friends and companions and love them? And then how can he have enmity and hatred against those who Allah and His Messenger love? Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is, not, this is not possible. This is not possible. And so a believer, again, he should not be deceived. And he particularly by these people who claim they have love for and they hide behind the, the, the family of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and this is falsehood. This is falsehood. Abu Zur'a uh, Ar-Razi, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, he died in the year 200, 264. He said, uh, wasalam, That if you see a man talking bad about any one of the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, know that he is a zindiq. A zindiq is a true hypocrite. A pure hypocrite who enters into the fold of Islam to corrupt it from the inside. They call him Zindiq, and the plural is Zanadiqa. Uh, Abu Zur'a rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, if you see anybody talking bad about anyone from the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, fa'lam annahu Zindiq, know that he is a Zindiq. He said, wa thalika anna, anna al-Qur'an al-haqun, wa rasulu, 
وَالرَّسُولَ حَقٌ وَمَا جَاءَ بِهِ حَقٌ He said that's because the Qur'an is the truth and the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the truth and that which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came with is the truth. وَمَا أَدَّى إِلَيْنَا ذَلِكَ إِلَّا أَسْحَابُ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ sallallahu alayhi wa sallam And no one has, uh, has, has conveyed this to us except for the companions of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Qur'an is the truth. And the Messenger is the truth, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and that which he came with from his sunnah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is the truth. And the ones who conveyed this to us are no one except for the companions. Are no one except for the companions of the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he said, فَيُرِيدُونَ أَنْ يَجْرَحُوا شُهُودَنَا لِيُبْطِلُوا الْكِتَابَ وَالسُنَّةِ So they want to find fault with our witnesses in order to invalidate the Qur'an and the sunnah. وَلَجَرْهُ بِهِمْ أَوْ لَا وَهُمْ زَنَادِقًا and they're more rightful to, ha to, to be found fault with and to, sp to be spoken ill of. And they're heretics. And they're heretics. So this is the case. If they, if the ones who conveyed the Qur'an to us and the chain of the Qur'an back to Allah Azza wa Jal is from the companions. He came from uh, Jibril. He heard it from Allah Azza wa Jal. And he conveyed it to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who conveyed it to the companions, who conveyed it to us until this day there's a chain. And likewise, the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he taught that, that revelation, that legislation to his companions and they conveyed it to us and there's a chain. And the only way to invalidate Islam is to invalidate and corrupt the chain, is to invalidate and corrupt the chain. And this is what they want to do by, by doing away with those who witness the revelation. By doing away with those who witness the revelation. So therefore, a believer, he will, not be tried, he will not be tried by this. He will know that they are the true enemies. That they are the true enemies of it, Al-Islam. And they want to take down Al-Islam. And they want to take down the Qur'an and the Sunnah. And they want to replace it with their deen and with their innovations and with the, their falsehood and their evil. Like this, Imam Ahmed, rahimahullah ta'ala, he has a similar statement. إِذَا رَأَيْتَ أَحَدًا تَكَلَّمَ فِي أَحَدٍ مِّنْ أَسْحَابِ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمَ فَاتَّهِمْهُ عَلَى الْإِسْلَامِ فَاتَّهِمْهُ عَلَى الْإِسْلَامِ If you see somebody talking about one of the companions of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, then, then accuse him about Islam. And he accuse him uh, and, 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 and be doubtful about his Islam. And that he is trying, and the only reason he will find fault with the companions is, is because of what they brought and what they transmitted. And they're the ones who transmitted the Quran. That's a heavy statement. They're the ones who transmitted the Sunnah. Where did that come from? Who transmitted that to us? Umar. Radiallahu anhu. How many narrations did Abu Hurairah? How many narrations did Abu Hurairah transmit? And Aisha, radiallahu anhu al -jameen. They're the ones who are they're the transmitters. They're the narrators of hadith. They're the ones who witnessed the revelation. They're the ones who learned the Quran from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and conveyed it. We can never have love for those who speak ill of them. And for those who speak ill of them, there's, there's never respect for them. This is any from the worst of the affairs. Shaykh Al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, he mentioned, Rahimahullah ta'ala, that they have, more, they have more harm and they have brought more corruption to Islam even than the Jews and the Christians. The Rafidah. And they're, 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 we're talking about then having love for the enemies of Allah. First and foremost, we will see that, that, is, that is them. And they're trying to corrupt that Islam from the inside. After this, the author, he says, Babu dhikri qaswati al-qalb. Babu dhikri qaswati al-qalb. The chapter with regards to the mention of uh, the hard heart. The hard heart. Having, uh, having a hard heart. And this is a major, a major calamity and uh, a major sin. And this is from the worst of all affairs that a believer could be tried with. And this is the case that the, the, the heart, if it is corrupted and uh, it not rectified, it can change. The heart, it, it's affected. The heart is affected by its surroundings and by, uh, by what it sees and what a person sees and what he hears and what he listens to and what he says. And what he does, this has an effect on the heart. And if the heart is not checked and kept clean with repentance and with tawbah and with remembrance of Allah Azza wa Jal, then it can become to the extent that it will become hard. It can come to the extent that it will become hard and then it will not benefit. It will not benefit from the khayr that comes. It, the, the, it will hear admonition, the admonition will come. He will not benefit from it. The, he will stand in front of a janazah and his, his eyes will be, will be dry and will not be affected. He will bury his brother in Islam and stand in front of the grave and watch it. And he will not be affected and he can't wait to go eat. And he's thinking about the dunya and the lies like this. And it could come to this extent that the heart can become hard. And, and then uh, likewise, the, the mercy 
and he is taken from the heart and he will be harsh hearted and he will be rude and uh, this is a, a, a foul state a foul state هذا وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم